Welcome to Sideshow. This isn't Sideshow. And this is, is Show Side. Seaside. Seaside Show Side. So you know what's hilarious though? Uh, you know how uh, we just talked about Link to the Past in general? Yeah. How it had the light in Dark World? We're playing a game right now that has that same exact concept. <laughs> yeah. Except, well, I've never played Link to the Past, so... Uh, take this with a grain of salt, I guess, or however the saying goes. I'd have to watch Brian here play it to get my general feeling. Or play it yourself. One or the way. other. Well, I could do it on Sideshow with you telling me where to go if I'm fucking up. Oh, uh, oh, you just get so pissed and go, Give me that fucking controller! <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I can beat that game, like, in less than five hours. I'm no, I'm not really great at speedrunning it, but I am getting better and better at it. It'd be kind of fun to speedrun it one day. But, um, like I like said, actually, take this with a grain of salt. I don't know how it's done. I don't know what the differences are. But I just have a feeling this might just be a more immersive Dark World, Night World concept than Link to the Past. This one? Yeah. Well, the... I mean, you I, played I it. I, I wouldn't say that. And uh, this Dark World, Light World concept, it's essentially... It, they pulled it off essentially nearly the same exact way. Okay. But uh, in Link to the Past, it just seems better because there's more to it. When you're in the Light World, there's like three dungeons. When you're in the Dark World, there's so much more. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's uh, kind of the same here. I mean, all you really do here... And the night world here, that is. Is visit Umos. Go to next place. Go to the fucking dark world of that place. Yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't really seem pulled off that well. I mean, I mean they have the points where you do something in the light world, it happens in the dark world, vice versa. And that doesn't happen that often in Link to the Past. But it just seems like it rounded out better. Although I love Metroid. A lot. I just seemed like I think it worked better in uh, Link to the Past. I don't know. That's just me. It might. You know, some people will probably say, "Hey, it worked better in this game." Yeah. I. I mean, yeah. I mean, we won't uh, be able to do more comparisons until I play it. I see it played. No, until Zelda makes a game where. It's, hey, Link gets corrupted, so now they can draw parallels to corruption. Honestly? Um. I wouldn't say Twilight Princess on that one, because you're, oh, no, it's no, just no, a no. wolf form. I wouldn't either. Um. Trying to think of it. Um. Prince. Uh, oh. Two Thumbs. While it was pulled off decently, I can I can truly and utterly say this with 100% confidence, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but um, don't get me wrong, how they pulled it off was nice, but I would have rather be like, I don't know, you correct you collect the sand on when it fills up the dagger. Once that's full, it fills up another gauge. Too full, you turn Dark Prince automatically. And not Worse, just... it's scripted. Yeah. Mean? Yeah, plus it's scripted. Like, if you really enjoyed playing as Dark Prince, what you could truly do is just constantly kill shit and turn into Dark Prince. But you get a bad ending to the game if that's how you beat that ass fight or something. You know, you, you get my point? Yeah. I mean, uh, the ending to that game is just literally the beginning of the first game. I still say no to that. You can sit there, try to state your case well enough. It still doesn't work. He's just telling the story. He's not... But he's telling you the story in the first game. No, he's I... just telling you the story of what happened since the first game up to that point. He's not re... He's not... 
redoing it. He's just telling the story. No, okay, okay. The first game begins with he the, t- he tells us he tells us. Uh, uh, sh- just let me speak, okay? Let the fans decide this, okay? I'm serious because we've had this argument many times. Let's let them decide. Okay, that's both state or case. Let's put it. Uh, no, to, no. to sum it up, he's saying the order is three one two. Or one two three, then three one two. The fact is, the first game starts off with most people think time is like a river, and flowing ever swiftly forward, never changing. But I am here to tell you that they are wrong. Time is like an ocean in a storm, for I have seen the face of time. Sit down, and I will tell you the tale of that I see have never seen before. Something along those lines, right? Yes. Okay. He then proceeds to tell the story of the first game. He even when you die, he goes, "No, no, no, that's not how it happened." Okay. Yes, but he's telling a story in the first game as well. Okay. So he's telling a story of him telling the story of what happened in the first game. That's where I think yours falls apart completely. It. I still say it happens one, two, three. In one, obviously the game goes through. In two, he undoes all of one. Of all of one, yes. Except in And him. that's why... Now hold on. Here's what I'm saying this works. In the third game, he meets Pharaoh. He's like, Pharaoh! How do you know my name? You beat the vizier again. Fuck a vizier. And he sits and he goes to... You know, he talks to her and he's like, Most people think... Time is like a river flowing. Blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I say the ending of the third game starts the cycle over of him telling the first game. And then it goes to the second game. He unwind, undoes time again, leading to the third game, so on and so forth. Out constantly repeating. It's not constantly repeating, though. He's just telling a story of what happened. Once he gets up to that point, he's done. He doesn't have to sit there and redo it every single time. That's why the order is one, two, three. With uh, Farragon and Sands in between one and two. And same with, uh, what was it called? The DS one. Mm. The DS one happens in there too. There was a DS one? Yeah, it was a strategy game. You mean like Command and Conquer strategy or... Uh, Fire Emblem. Ish. It, it had okay, a, it had a those... weird thing going on with it. I didn't really like it that much. Well, I did. Actually, I did like it a lot. I, but it to was everyone who just heard me go, Ugh. I do not like that kind of strategy game. I mean... He I... likes real-time strategy. He doesn't like strategy. Real time strategy being Command and Conquer, World War, uh, not World Warcraft, uh, Warcraft, those kind of things where it's constantly going. Strategy game, it happens in turns. Yeah. And while that's not saying I hate most turn based combat games, you know, I mean, obviously I like RPGs such as Final Fantasy. You know, I like those kind of games. I'm going to state that out right, right now. But when it comes to a strategy game like we're talking about, I don't know, I just can't get into turn, do this, turn With like every single person, then turn over, then they do their stuff, instead of like, they do something and you react to it. Some strategy games actually have a reaction to what they do, but it, it, yeah, it depends but on what strategy game you're playing. I, that's... Like Final Fantasy Tactics, for example, it actually does have a reaction to what they do. If you're facing in a different direction, your character will react to it in a different way. I mean, it's not yeah. it's not controllable interaction, but you can plan it out. So it's a bit different. Yeah, true. But um, the reason I like real-time strategy so much is because uh, one day I was talking to my friend Andy, played him, right? He got me into Command & Conquer, and, you know, like a, maybe a month, week to a month later, I had in my hands... Uh, a dual pack for Command & Conquer Red Alert 2 and its expansion, Yuri's Revenge. And I fucking love the, that, the Red Alert timeline. Because, you know, you have, I think it's like four different timelines of Command & Conquer. You got the original, Red Alert, Tiberium Wars, or Sun, one of them. 
and then the generals. Generals being a more realistic. I mean, you got scud missiles with anthrax. You got a particle cannon. You got a nuclear warhead for like the so uh, the bad guys. You know. And and the turn-based ones, it's like, oh, there's this guy on the board. Okay, I'll plan it out. Whereas when a side builds a super weapon in com uh, Command and Conquer, it sets a timer till it's ready to launch. And it just becomes a very real threat. Because these super weapons can be extremely devastating to your side, you know? What do you mm -hmm. think? It really depends on the strategy game, in my opinion, because some strategy games I hate. So Such as? Just, um, like, I'm, I was half and half on the Prince of Persia Battles, I think it was. But uh, then there's other strategy games where I'm just like, ugh, why am I playing this? Because it just feels stupid. I, I can't name any off the top of my head. Uh, for strategy-wise, for real-time strategy, I like the Warcraft game. I do not like the Command and Conquer games. I, I'm just sick of seeing like realistic or semi-realistic war or futuristic. I, I like the more fantasy kind of things where it just looks awesome. Mm, fair enough, but I mean, I can say that some of that does fall into Command and Conquer because, like, the first. I got a B or C. Yeah, the first one. It's a futuristic technology. I mean, there's, like, nothing that does it, you know? Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna like games like Final Fantasy Tactics, where you have to, like, sit there, plan out where all the people go, etc., and then you have to brace for that. And then you go, and whatever they did, you essentially plan out your next moves, all that stuff. And then there's other games, like Fire Emblem, where you're like, oh, hey... I got a bunch of different people. With Fire Emblem, actually with both uh, Tactics and Fire Emblem, they use land like to their advantage wherever you have uh, certain areas. Yeah. You can... Uh... Was I supposed to go here? Uh, you but, you know, not You can sad. essentially like say, hey, I'm going to go in the forest so they can't see me. Yeah. Or I'm going to go up... I'm going to use my Dragoon to jump up this so they okay. can't reach me. But answer me this. In a tactic game, you have the boss or the yeah the boss on the field at times, right? Yeah, sometimes they sometimes they appear due to now. Answer me this: when they appear on the field, do you feel like you have a very real threat? Actually, yes, because usually their moves are tons better than that was weird. Are tons better than yours? Like. They appear on the field, then they move like 20 spaces. You're like, what? How the heck did they do that? And then they just sit there and mutilate one of your party members, etc. If it's a Fire Emblem game, if your character dies, they're gone. Completely, they're done. If it's huh. a, if it's a uh, actual main character, like the one of the main main characters, not like a main side character. It's kind of hard to explain that one. They essentially are. It's like game over. So, yeah, it just depends on what game it is. Like, I remember playing E Strategy. I love the E series, but I couldn't really get into it. I'm not sure if I just didn't really give it enough of a chance. But I didn't. It was a DS game, and I had to play it. I think I imported it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can I get through this without dying? Yes, I can. I can get through this without dying, finally. But, um. Ah, uh, next time on Sideshow, I see where this leads. Whoa. And I will continue what I'm talking about as well. Just because, you know. See you then.